Hello YouTube, this is uh, Captain Nav, I hope you are all doing well. In this video uh, today we are going to uh, basically uh, talk about uh, how we use uh, the uh, engine anti-ice on the Boeing 777. So for the tutorial I will do a positioning flight from uh, Paris Orly to uh, Paris Charles de Gaulle on the Boeing 777-300ER. As you can see from the meta displayed here, the uh, weather is uh, fairly poor, uh, we have uh, snow uh, low visibility and uh, temperature of uh, minus 7 degrees Celsius so uh, icing uh, conditions definitely uh, exist so uh, basically uh, icing conditions uh, exist when the outside air temperature on the ground or the total air temperature in flight is 10 degrees Celsius or below and uh, we have uh, visible moisture such as uh, clouds fog uh, with uh, visibility less than uh, 1600 meters uh, rain snow etc etc or there is uh, standing water ice snow on the taxiways or runways so today is the case obviously and um, we have uh, the ice anti-ice the aircraft uh, before the push and we are now starting the engines so to uh, illustrate the use of uh, engine anti-ice, I will uh, uh, make use of the uh, FCOM uh, 1 uh, normal uh, before taxi uh, procedure. And I will also use the uh, adverse weather supplementary uh, procedure section uh, 16 engine anti-ice operation on the ground. Let's listen to the left engine uh, starting. very uh, realistic engine sounds so on the uh, overhead panel now uh, we're gonna switch off the APU then uh, turn on the uh, engine anti-ice selectors and uh, we're gonna check on the uh, upper ICAS here next to the N1 gauges we can see in green EAI so that's good then we'll uh, check the recall there's nothing there and uh, finally display the checklist Parking brake set. So we have uh, two good starts and uh, we'll uh, continue uh, the video uh, closer to the Olding Point runway 24. So here we are approaching uh, the Olding Point runway 24 and uh, once we uh, line up in these uh, very uh, cold and uh, icing uh, conditions, uh, we're gonna have to do an engine uh, run up. So uh, the engine run up is kind of uh, compulsory when the uh, temperature is. Uh, 3 degrees uh, Celsius or lower and uh, we're gonna be uh, using uh, engine anti-ice on the ground so we we'll line up uh, runway uh, 24 we can see the weather is quite well uh, simulated there's a fair amount of uh, slush on the runway and uh, when we have uh, slush on the runway uh, basically uh, for takeoff we can use uh, assumed temperature we've got to use uh, full uh, toga takeoff so I'll now demonstrate uh, the uh, engine uh, static run-up. So we uh, display the uh, engine on the lower display here. Uh, step on the brakes. Bring the uh, N1 to about 40%. And uh, keep an eye on the uh, engine vibrations. Then we increase the thrust a little bit more. Still stepping on the brakes. No uh, engine uh, vibrations. We can uh, close the uh, engine display and then uh, press uh, toga and uh, off we go so we got thrust ref enunciated 80 knots as i said it's uh, toga takeoff so a lot of power uh, we're just accelerating uh, very very quickly and uh, up we climb positive climb gear up uh, we've got a lot of extra performance on the initial climb autopilot and uh, off we climb now it's a normal climb uh, nothing special uh, we uh, still have uh, the uh, engine anti-ice on so uh, there's no uh, particular concern at this time 
So we'll uh, retract the flaps as uh, usual. So we'll go for uh, flaps one. And uh, now we'll go for uh, flaps up. And we'll wait for the flaps indication to turn from uh, up uh, magenta to uh, up green. And once we have uh, up green, uh, we'll uh, display the uh, checklist. Here we are. And uh, now we can uh, go up to the overhead panel and the uh, engine anti-ice selectors come to the uh, auto position. Here we are. And uh, from now on, they'll stay on the auto position and the uh, anti-ice uh, system will uh, automatically uh, detect uh, icing conditions and turn the uh, engine anti-ice on uh, whenever uh, icing conditions are detected. So in the simulator I uh, inserted uh, quite uh, cold uh, conditions uh, as you can see on the dat it's uh, fairly cold there was minus seven on the ground and uh, also in cloud uh, inserted uh, uh, severe icing conditions to test uh, the system uh, in uh, the triple seven. So hopefully in these uh, extreme conditions uh, we should see the engine anti-ice uh, come on quite rapidly and I'll be able to uh, demonstrate uh, how the system works. So here it is, uh, we can see on the uh, display there uh, above the uh, N1 uh, gauges uh, the uh, green uh, indication EAI so that means that the system has uh, detected uh, icing conditions and has uh, automatically uh, turned uh, engine anti-ice on when icing uh, conditions are no longer detected the system will uh, automatically uh, switch engine anti-ice off so we've got engine anti-ice back on again uh, you can see uh, it doesn't stay off for a long time and as you can see, the engine anti-ice selectors are indeed in the uh, auto position, along with the green uh, EAI indication above the uh, N1 gauges. So that shows you that uh, the system works uh, in the uh, auto position. However, please note that the conditions in the simulator need to be uh, perfect. Engine uh, anti-ice will not come on all the time. And even if you are in cloud and the temperature is... Uh, uh, below uh, 10 uh, degrees uh, total air temperature uh, engine anti-ice might not come on all the time so the conditions need to be uh, perfect uh, icing need to be uh, present in, uh, in the weather you are simulating either uh, directly from uh, flight simulator or prepared or uh, via uh, weather add-ons like uh, active sky next or uh, other weather add-ons so uh, as I said, uh, it's not going to come on all the time and you need to be uh, fairly uh, patient uh, for uh, engine anti-ice to be uh, displayed. As I've uh, already said, I've enabled uh, severe icing conditions in uh, cloud uh, directly in the uh, flight simulator uh, weather engine. You will probably not get these uh, extreme weather conditions uh, with uh, weather engines like uh, Active Sky Next and therefore uh, engine anti-ice will not uh, come on automatically uh, all the time. However, it's good to note that uh, the uh, simulator will create icing conditions and that the aircraft uh, will uh, detect uh, such conditions. So once again, I'll uh, show you how the system works. We can see our uh, engine anti-ice selectors are auto. EAI appears in green. We can see the total air temperature, minus 8 degrees Celsius. And if you look at uh, progress page uh, 2, uh, you have uh, the uh, outside air temperature, the SAT, minus uh, 17 degrees Celsius. Uh, one uh, last thing I wanted to uh, to show you on uh, the uh, engine anti-ice is uh, basically uh, how the system works. So uh, we can uh, look at the air synoptics. Uh, you can see the system is on. And on the synoptics, we'll uh, understand how the system works. Basically, uh, bleed air from uh, the engine is brought towards the front of the engine, towards the uh, engine nacelle, and uh, warms up the, the nacelle. So, when uh, the uh, system is uh, turned off, uh, then you'll see the green uh, arrows from the engine will uh, disappear. The uh, engine anti-ice valve will uh, close, as is now the case, and uh, the system is now off. The uh, EAI is no longer uh, displayed on the uh, uh, upper ICAS above the uh, N1 gauges. 
So that's uh, pretty much it for uh, the system. I will now uh, rejoin the video on uh, shot final, uh, gear down, flap 20, and uh, arm the speed brake and display the landing uh, checklist. So even in uh, landing uh, configuration with uh, all the gear and uh, flaps extended, uh, engine anti-ice will automatically uh, come on uh, whenever required. You may have noticed uh, wing anti-ice uh, has not come on uh, at all throughout the video. Uh, in the real aircraft, uh, wing anti-ice uh, very, very rarely uh, comes on. You see it maybe uh, once in the blue moon, so uh, I wouldn't uh, worry uh, so much about wing anti-ice uh, here in the simulator. So uh, one final uh, proof. The engine anti-ice selectors are auto and uh, you can see uh, engine anti-ice is on and displayed in green and the uh, total air temperature is uh, minus 9 uh, we are in uh, landing uh, configuration with uh, flaps uh, 30 we are now on uh, short final uh, runway uh, 26 left at uh, Paris uh, Charles de Gaulle nicely uh, established on the uh, ILS is uh, still uh, snowing uh, buckets uh, we can start uh, seeing the runway lights now so we should be uh, able to land, uh, hopefully. One uh, consideration in these uh, conditions uh, for landing is obviously the, the state of the runway. Uh, if the runway is uh, uh, covered with uh, slush or snow, uh, it might uh, make the landing distance uh, a little bit longer than uh, usual. And uh, therefore you need to assess uh, beforehand uh, whether you can land or not. Uh, this is a little bit beyond the scope of the video, but I thought I would just uh, mention it. So here we are, touching down runway uh, 26 left at uh, Paris. You can see uh, a lot of uh, slush on the runway, uh, but uh, the runway is, uh, is clear and the whole uh, 45 meters are cleared. And once we have uh, decelerated, we'll take the next uh, convenient right. So once you uh, vacate the runway, uh, one of the first steps is to uh, set the uh, engine anti-ice back to the uh, on position. So uh, what I'll do here in the video is uh, stop the aircraft on the taxiway. I can't uh, taxi the aircraft and do all the switching. So uh, parking brake is uh, set. We'll go to the overhead panel and the engine anti-ice selectors come back to the on position. Then we can start the uh, APU and uh, follow the normal uh, after landing uh, flow. Also, if there is a lot of uh, snow on the taxiways, then you would consider taxiing with the flaps uh, extended. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Until then, take care and I'll uh, see you soon.